Hello guys and welcome to episode 11 of my Total War Warhammer playthrough playing as the Greenskins on very hard difficulty and in the last episode we took over Karaz Akarak from the Dwarves and destroyed the Dwarves utterly so they are no longer. Now we need to go and reclaim all of the Dwarf holds. We will be bumping into chaos at some point and uh, yeah should be a lot of fun. Uh, we're probably going to have to uh, go through the Border Princes else they would, might likely attack us in the back uh, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem once we get all of our settlements sorted out take over uh, this new province the Blood River Valley we should have a absolute ton of income we can also confederate the bloody spears in this episode possibly really have to source out my public order first though since it's not really doing too well currently we're positive in Death Pass for the first time in a long time. Eastern Badlands is not doing too bad either with plus three obedience. Getting plus three in Blight Water now as well. I think what we're going to do is continue to upgrade that but before we do let's go for the Stunty Mine at Kalak as Gal since that will generate us a ton of income. So Morglis Wolfherder, what you're going to do today is start by colonising Balag Dowersbag. Thank you very much, good sir. And you're going to upgrade that to a greenskin hideout. We're going to move on to the next turn. So we'll next go to Dok Karaz, Balag Var, then Varenka Hills and we should be fine. Oh, we might want to go to Vrenk Hills next because it looks like the Bloody Spears are coming down here to spoil the day. Rebellion in the Southern Badlands. That's fine. And the Red Horn Tribe have been destroyed. There is plenty of raiding going on. Let's go grab Varenka Hills and colonise that. Okay, so Krugger is right next to the Chaos Rebellion. And I'm pretty sure that... The top knots are travelling down towards Gore Gazan. So let's uh, destroy the Chaos Rebels. Easy done. Thank you very much, Krugger. And he has levelled up. So I might give him the Nasty Skulker for the plus 10% weapon strength. And he can go and jump in Galbaraz to sort out the public order here. Okay. Grimgore is still replenishing his troops at Kalazakarak. We are going to upgrade the heap of shiny stuff there. And uh, we will likely actually come out of Kalazakarak and maybe go into uh, raiding camp. Although... Raiding in our own lands is probably a bad idea. Now we're going to remain in Karazakarak, mainly for the public order actually. Just notice that that would become quite bad. <laughs> okay, we need to take uh, Barakvar and then Dok Karaz. And that is in another entire settlement under our command or province. And uh, that's great. Okay, so I think everything's done for this turn. We complete our technology in the next turn. So we're expanding extremely quickly and hopefully our income will improve too. Because then we can recruit new armies and prepare to head north. Oh, it looks like the Bloody Spears are attacking the uh, Border Princes. Well, that's something. Big and Bullies has been complete. Now we're going for Black Orc Bellow for the plus five leadership for Orc units. Can we hit the top knots this turn? No, we can't. We are going to follow them though. And there's not really anywhere for them to go, so hopefully we will destroy them soon. Then we can head back up north. So at Blightwater, I think what we're going to do is invest in the boss's shack. In the eastern badlands, we probably should upgrade one of these to a greenskin burrows. But before we do, let's underway towards Balakvar with Morglus and we can take Balakvar in the next turn. Morglus can level up to get Savages complete so that's good. 
Grimgore still replenishing his troops and we can probably add the Crimson Killers to his army soon. Probably not just yet. Let's go and have a chat with the Bloody Spears. They would join the Confederation so I kind of need to just wait on that. Now in the Western Badlands what we're going to do is build another boss's tent because we do need two in each of the provinces in order to cancel out the very hard difficulty and the taxes. If we were playing on normal difficulty you'd probably only need one in each province. Considering there's not much better to build anyway it's not too much of an issue. But that has used up the majority of my cash. Let me just go into the provinces tab. This is the easiest way to see if there's stuff to build. For the desolation of Nagash, I might actually upgrade this to a boss's shack so that we get plus two obedience there. To, and also it kind of helps cancel out the vampiric and chaos corruption. So we'll end the turn. Palakvar will soon be ours. And it's nice because we sort of have a bit of peacetime at the moment where we can sort out what we want to do next. So there is raiding at Karazakarak. I think that's just the... I think that's our... Yeah, our allies, the... Greenskin Wa. That's what I, I was trying to get at. <laughs> just sort of chilling on our lands right now, raiding us. Well, we're going to upgrade to the shiny pit there. Should give us more income. We can maybe crush the uh, top knots today. I don't know. Let's colonize Gore Kazan and uh, then they won't be able to settle in our lands. Because with this army of Sneak Arm Breaker. Basically all of the garrisons now in the Southern Badlands should, in theory, be able to kill that army. I'm not sure what we want to get in Agrol Migdal. We do want the boss's tent actually, don't we? Hmm. Well we're gonna have to wait till next turn for some more cash. We're going to have to choose a new opponent soon. Maybe we fight the Bloody Spears. Because the Bloody Spears... I mean, we may as well just take the settlements from them. Yeah, I think we're just going to do that. Thank you very much. That's the first one. I'm actually tempted to loot and occupy it and pop the public order. Yeah, we're going to do that. So we've got a few nice traits there. I can repair these two buildings and we'll move on to Mount Squighorn. I might be able to get Gorkill to uh, take Mount Squighorn for us. Actually, maybe I can just do it myself in the next turn. Yeah, I think we might do that. Either way, Grimgore has leveled up. So we will give him Ard Lads. And next turn we will get the Crimson Killers. Largog One Finger has also leveled up and can continue with Propagandist. I need to get him actually out of the army. There we go. I keep forgetting. We may as well deploy him for this turn. So currently plus seven public order per turn at the Southern Badlands. Let's get that boss's tent finished and we'll get the heap of shiny stuff. Morglus can take Barakvar if we had enough cash. Maybe we can delay the building of that boss's tent for one more turn. Well actually maybe we get the boss's tent but not the uh, heap of shiny stuff. Or maybe not either, because there's so much stuff we can build here. Like, we definitely want to 
get the green skin hideout at Barakvar, and we also want to start working on the piles of shiny stuff. So we'll do that. Okay, Kruger can stay where he is. We can issue a commandment in the southern badlands, which will be at Camp Ruckus. And we'll move on. So there is probably going to be a rebellion at Karaz Akarak. But that should be fine. The top knots are sailing on round. Not entirely sure where they're going to go though. The green tide has been complete. This is actually really good timing because the plus 8,000 is really, really useful. Get out the way. Do we want to get extra obedience for minus leadership? Yes, we do. Next chapter objective issued. Wah! Grimgore. A wah is upon the green skins. The orcs gather in great numbers and so they must bring as many regions under Grimgore's iron fist as possible. Such an act will appease Gork and Mork and ensure that Grimgore's name is remembered for all time. So now we have to do 18 settlements. Right, let's uh, finally get these buildings done since we did just get a massive cash injection. I'm going to continue on to Doc Karaz now and colonize this as well. And Blood River Valley is under our control. So we're going to go for the Camp Ruckus. We're going to get the Greenskin hideout there. And that's great. So we can start upgrading that. We're going to move to Mount Squighorn. Let's just encircle that. We will get the Crimson Killers. And we'll slam down on that settlement very hard. We will loot and occupy it. And this will definitely pop the Rebellion in the next turn. So Kalazakarak should be able to defend itself for a little while until we get back there to defend it. So I think what there's two more settlements left or three more settlements left with the with the bloody spears. Mount Gumbad and Grom Peak are two of them and then I think they have one more somewhere else maybe Zufbar or something like that. So I think that's just an easier way of doing it than having to run back and deal with the rebellions in the Badlands just because I decided to go for a confederation instead. Alright, let's uh, march up towards Gronti Mingol. We can keep an eye on uh, Sneak. Uh, Largug. He can probably try and assassinate this chap. That was a failure. How dare he fail. And, well, maybe Krugger can start moving up north as well now. Yeah, I think we're going to get him to start moving up. We can probably sort out the public order in Galbaraz once we have the second boss instead. Silver Road needs a commandment. May as well go for the Camp Ruckus and we will upgrade to the Horde there. Anything else we need to build. Well, we can upgrade to the Greenskin Burrows at Calagadron. Add Blightwater. I guess we may as well upgrade Calakazul to a level 4 settlement. That might be the best way to use that population surplus. Not entirely sure. Like, what's really useful to get here? Like, we can get the Black Orc Forge and we can finally start building the muster fields in the Desolation of Nagash. That's something we can do. In the Eastern Badlands, I think we're okay. We can upgrade maybe the Crooked Fang Fort so that we can upgrade the boss's tent. Okay, so we're currently making 6,500 a turn, so it looks like it's time to possibly build another army soon. Uh, 
and the Rebellion. And the Silver Road. I think it was just destroyed by the Wa, though. So, we are getting positive public order already. Well, that's one way to do it. Military crackdown and military presence. Sorting that out. Let's get Gore killed to target Grom Peak. And I'll get uh, Grimgore to uh, run round and attack Mount Gumbad. So, we can actually recruit more men. Since we do have the Brawling Grounds and Wolf Den at Mount Squighorn. So I am going to treat myself to some more Orc boys, I feel. Or maybe even some Goblin Wolf Riders. What can we get here? We can get the Teeth Robbers. We'll take them. And then we'll grab another unit of Orc boys for Grimgore to max out his army. Kruger can move on up. Morglus can move back to Barakvar. And he can replenish there. We will get the Greenskin Wharf going. That's absolutely fine. May as well upgrade to the boss's shack at, in the west of the Badlands. And here we may as well get the pile of shiny stuff. Actually, let's cancel this boss's shack. And we will upgrade uh, Gore Gazan to a level 2 settlement. Because then we can get maybe another boss's tent. I'm not sure. Where Zag's on his way up again, though. So that's fine. How are our quests doing? So we've got to carry out assassination attempt, attempt against the bloody spears. That's not going to happen. We need to complete that battle. We can do that at some point. And use a hero to perform an action against the Greenskin Tribe. So it's just both Greenskin Tribe quests. Not too much of an issue because... We will destroy the Bloody Spears soon, and both of those will auto-complete. So I'm not sure how my Wa intends to get to Grom Peak, but it just went the other way. And Grimgore just got assassinated. Wow. Well, I guess uh, Crusher can take up the mantle for a little while. Morgler is in our way, so what are we going to do about him? Not much, apparently. Because we can't move too much farther forwards. Could go into a raiding uh, camp. But I think we're not going to. We're just going to chill gonna chill here. Let's have Larga come over. We need to get rid of this uh, Turg backstabber. How long is Grimgord down for? Four turns. How annoying. By the way, Wurzag is on his way up. I'm loving this uh, extra obedience at the moment that we're getting. That lasts for one more turn. It's definitely helped sort things out. Southern Badlands may suffer from some minor disobedience for a while. But we should be able to sort it out once we have the growth there. So once Dorg Gazan, for example, uh, levels up the settlement, we should be able to build another boss's tent there and forget completely about the Badlands. In Blightwater, we can use the cash to uh, upgrade one of these settlements. Uh, we'll probably just get uh, Death Gorge to upgrade. And we'll upgrade uh, Filet of Sorrow as well. Morglus is still going to be replenishing. Although he is going to have to uh, increase his fightiness soon. Since he has just been running around colonising. We'll get the pile of shiny stuff at Doc Karaz and we'll upgrade Barak Bar. Seems like a good use of our cash. Stabbing. And we will end the turn there. Mm. 
So I'm pretty sure that that army is going to go all the way round to Death Gorge. Top Knots would like a peace treaty. Who are they at war with? Just me? I mean, we probably could take this peace treaty. Because they'll probably just die out anyway, because they don't have a settlement. I don't know, I think we just decline it. Because then they can never safely come into my lands. Let's uh, move up here in underway stance towards Nashrak so that we can attack him in the next turn if we need to. Let's get rid of uh, Turg Backstabber. And that was a critical failure. I think that was like a 55% chance of success and we still managed to fail. <sighs> That's quite spectacular, honestly. Let's move towards uh, Karag Dramar with Kruger. Morglus Wolfherder can maybe attack the Border Princes soon. Wurzag's on his way up and he's losing fightiness as well. How much fightiness do we actually have in this army? Currently 41 and we're losing one more. Oh god. Um, yeah, maybe we just destroy the Border Princes. They don't have a very big garrison. Jump into the Provinces tab anyway, and we will upgrade things at probably Death Pass. Get Greenskin Burrows going there. Destination of Nagash, may as well upgrade this to a Brawling Grounds. And what can we build in this slot? I guess the only thing we can build is a Goblin Watchtower that's actually useful. And we'll end the turn. There we go. The Wa is running on through the Empire's lands. So the Silver Road is being raided still. Those savages. It looks like a Savage Orc tribe has come. Are oh, they going to declare war on me though? Let's uh, get our defensive buildings up. At Galbaraz, we probably don't need to upgrade that one yet. I think we need to upgrade all of my minor settlements to level 3 first. We'll do uh, Gronti Mingol first. Whereas I can head up. Next turn, Morglus is going to be suffering from unruly fightiness so we're gonna probably jump on Akendorf I have Kruger move towards uh, Matorka and we can crush the border princes it's gonna be the first time in like eight campaigns that I've actually fought the border princes it's pretty crazy well, let's uh, smack these guys to pieces just auto resolve that, thank you very much. Crush those chaps. Bossy, extra growth and obedience. Not too bad. Can we uh, march to a location which doesn't suffer from attrition? No, we cannot. But we may as well just march forwards. So Crusher can get dripping tips for the extra poison attacks in the Lord's army. And how many more turns now till Grimgore's alive too? Okay. So at Varenka Hills, we may as well be upgrading another one of these settlements. I think Varenka Hills itself is the best one to upgrade first. Anywhere else we can upgrade things. At Kalagdron, we can start working on the uh, Goblin Watchtower. And we do have low fightiness, but that's okay. So we can move on to the next turn.
So basically we're, we're going to be colonizing all of the lands left behind by Zufbar, Karakadrin and so on. But it's good that we got the dwarves out of the way because they're not going to be confederating. Let's go into normal stance. We'll attack Akendorf. Declare war on the border princes. And well, we can just go straight for this since we do have some goblin rock lobbers. So let's have a quick siege. We will quick save this and fight it on the battle map. And here we are, the Siege of Akendorf. Like I said, it's the first time we've attacked the Border Princes, but one thing I forgot to do before I started this battle was actually assign my banners. I have two like armor piercing damage banners, which would be really, really useful, but I completely forgot to assign them, so we don't have them. We're gonna have the uh, Goblin Rock Lobbers start in the center, fire at the gatehouse for us. We'll have all of the uh, bow units move on forwards at the start. Probably have the night goblins actually start behind the orc archers because the orc archers can take the missile fire, whereas the night goblins will just run away. We'll have all of the forest goblin spider riders hide in the forest along with the orc boar boys, and we'll have all of these chaps climb the wall and crush the enemy infantry. Easy. Okay, let's uh, start the battle. We will charge on forwards with all of our orcs. I'm going to get uh, Morgulus to climb up on the far left. We'll get all of our orc archer boys to move forwards. Nice and spread out. Same with the uh, night goblins. Oh yeah, we need to get the uh, goblin rock lovers to hit the gate. Otherwise, these uh, spider riders are completely useless. That's 10%, not too bad. Okay, are the uh, night goblins even in range? That's the question. No, they're not. So we'll move them forwards in front of the orc archers. At least we are doing plenty of damage to the gate. Night goblins firing away with their poison arrows. Gonna do a nice amount of damage, that's for sure. Ladders have docked at the walls, they're not gonna know what hit them. Fifty two per cent damage onto the gates. Smash into these crossbowmen with Morglus. Oh, he absolutely wrecked those chaps. That missile fire is seriously deadly. I'm surprised the towers haven't actually targeted my uh, catapults yet. Because those rock lobbers, they are going to be the key to victory. Because as soon as I can break through the gate with all these forest goblin spider riders, we can overwhelm the units in the centres. Maybe not the halberdiers, but the swordsmen definitely. 
We've got one unit here. Let's uh, continue to crush on to the right side with all of them. These guys can all move towards the center as well. Enemy gates are destroyed. I'm going to stop that there. And we're going to have all of my forest goblin spider riders move inside. These guys can travel to the left side. Right side, sorry. It's funny how that makes the game lag. When I'm trying to assign orders inside the settlement for those units. Let's get my uh, night goblins inside. And the orc archers in front of them. Okay, so it's just the unit of halberdiers there. Charge on forwards with all of our units. Maybe we could even get the night goblins to go up on the walls. Actually, let's get the orc archers on the walls. Because the night goblins are shorter ranged. So all my units coming down off the walls now. Morglus amongst the biggins. Smashing things to pieces. I love it. Okay, so these units have come round the flank. It's really good. Run down these crossbowmen. Poor crossbowmen. I would hate being run down by a giant spider. That would completely creep me out. Like, screw the fact that I was dying. I would literally just be scared shitless of the spider. I'm not like an arachnophobe as such, but if a giant spider was attacking me, I think I'd be shit scared. And there you go. You learnt something about me, and you saw the siege of Akendorf. We'll end the battle there for a decisive victory. 256 losses, not too shabby. We can take that settlement. Not entirely sure if we can actually colonise it, but we can definitely just sack it and raise it. Job done. Ooh, sack it for 12,000. Yes, please. So if we go to Morglus here, he's got all of his uh, followers already, so we don't need to worry about that. He has leveled up, so we'll go for shooters now, and we'll max that out as usual. He can go into raiding camp for this turn. And Krugger can move on to attack Matorka. That's going to be a quick water resolve and another sack probably. For 10,000? Wow. That's pretty crazy. But unfortunately, guys, that has been my time. So in the next episode, we can find out what we want to spend all this cash on and continue with our destruction of the Border Princes. But in the meantime, that's all. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Goodbye.